We continue with the rest of our stories and the minority in parliament is challenging the legality of the Ghana Gas Company. They have faulted the company for illegality attempting a transaction with Sinopec regarding a loan facility without parliamentary approval. And the minority at a press briefing on energy also touched on a number of issues confronting the energy sector needing urgent attention. In a belated effort to develop our gas potential, the government has been the property of the corporation, the GMPC. This law would appear to reserve all the natural gas in our oil fields to GMPC. Indeed, it is by virtue of this provision that GMPC spent over 33 million US dollars in constructing pipelines from the oil fields to the shore. Ghana Gas, however, appears to have arrogated ownership of this natural resource onto itself and there is currently an ongoing bitter battle about the ownership of same between the two state owned entities. In a further act of illegality and opaqueness, the operations of Ghana Gas have been completely shrouded in secrecy. It is now well known, for us it's now well known, about 700 and uh, 50 million US dollars of the proposed Chinese loan facility was to be allocated to the operations of Ghana Gas Company. As things stand now, Ghanaians do not know what really is the construction cost of the gas project and how much of the Chinese loan has been made available to them. Further, what kind of financial arrangement exists between Ghana Gas and Sinopec, which, as we understand, has been providing some other loan facilities to Ghana Gas Company and which Parliament is not aware of. And joining me on the full line is Dr. Kwabna Donko. He is the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Kwabna Donko. Thank you. Now, um, first of all, the minority is challenging the legality of the Ghana Gas Company. As a uh, chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy, what do you have to say to this? Well, I speak in my personal capacity. And in my personal capacity, I don't see anything illegal about Ghana Gas Company. Um, so Ghana Gas Company is not the first limited liability company in the energy sector. The bulk oil storage and transportation company is also a limited liability company owned 100 percent by the people of Ghana. Um, Ghana, ha Ghana Gas has the same legal status. Um, Temoy Refinery is also a limited liability company. So there is nothing illegal about the status. Um, if there are cross-cutting issues, then let's look at the cross-cutting issues. But if you say Ghana gas is illegal or your question is legality, then that is a misnomer. Mm. Ghana gas is registered under the company's code of Ghana, and it has the appropriate registration documentation from the Registrar General. So there is nothing illegal about its legal status or its existence. Mm. And one of the main issues that they did raise was that they, they faulted the company um, for attempting a transaction with Sinopec regarding a loan facility without parliamentary approval. Was this done without parliamentary approval? That, that, that is a different issue. That does not make the company illegal. And there are two schools of thought. There are those who believe that once the parent loan agreement um, was approved by or ratified by Parliament, it covers the consequential loan. There are also those who think that the very specifics of each consequential loan uh, should also be submitted to Parliament. That is an issue of opinion. And until the Attorney General advises on it to the contrary, um, the current position is tenable. 
However, uh, by this, I'm not saying that the other school of thought is wrong. But these are not issues for criminalizing or declaring an entity illegal. There are issues that should be addressed. They can be addressed by various committees. They can be addressed and raised on the floor of parliament. And then I'm also aware that the leadership of parliament um, has set up a committee to look at some of these to look at some of these technical issues, particularly pertaining to our constitution and then the ratification of loans and facilities. The speaker has set up a committee and they are looking into that, some of these issues. Mm. So I rather would have wished my colleagues had waited since they are members, some of they are members of this committee that the speaker set up. Mm. But would you say they are raising these concerns because most of the dealings were done without parliamentary approval? I cannot justify that in a 10 key project mm -hmm. is not without parliamentary approval. Um, as I stated earlier, the main China Development Loan Facility was approved by parliament. And that there are two schools of thought. There are those who believe that the master loan having been approved the consequential ones should be deemed approved. And there is also a second school of thought that says the consequential ones should also be ratified individually. It's a matter of opinion. Thank you very much. We have been speaking with Dr. Kwabna Donko. He is the chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Mines and Energy. And he was reacting to the minority challenging the legality of the Ghana Gas Company.